that grant. But we have a grant from TBR to write the first edition. We were to write the first edition in the fall and then have a set use feedback to make a second edition in the spring. And uh, if it really if it hadn't been for the grant, I don't think we would have done it. It was just, you know, the fall was just so crazy. And I just it was like, oh no, why did I say we were gonna write an OER? But because we had the grant, I was like, we're doing it. And um then we we by the skin of our teeth got this um, OER ready for spring. So um, what I'd like to do is show you the um, TBR website about OERs first. And let's see here. Uh, the TBR, if you just Googled, I can, I can put this in the chat, but the TBR website for OERs is, um, starts with information about grants grants and I our team is part of the cycle two OER grant recipients and cycle one was for academic year 2020-2021 and Robert Ladd um, and Engl English faculty had an OER grant in cycle one and then in cycle two we have an OER grant and what I wanted to share is that cycle three, which would be uh, for academic year 2022-2023, that grant cycle, that grant is going to be opened up later this month. And so I just wanted to show you, if you go to the TBR grant page, it's not listed yet, but you can see um, the one for last year that I applied to, the Open Educational Resources OER grants application is closed. So I expect that this page shortly will announce the application for next year, next academic year, and the deadline will probably be close to this, somewhere near April 2nd, 2022. And as I talk about this, if you would like to write an OER grant, I can share the grant that I wrote and I'll show you some of it today. Also, Robert shared his grant with me and I'm sure he would share it with you. So Robert's written a grant that was funded and I've written a grant that was funded. So hopefully we can have some grants funded for the next cycle. Okay, but back to the OER page. The, the reason OERs are useful for our students is for all the reasons shown on this graph here. It, the impact of textbook costs on our students can mean that they take fewer courses or they don't register for a specific course or they drop a course or they withdraw from a course or they earn a poor grade because they didn't buy the book or they fail the course because they didn't buy the book or they don't ever um, purchase it um, to begin with. Um, maybe they pass the course, but they don't buy the book. So, but it's a huge undertaking to write an OER. And there are, but the nice thing about OERs is there are OERs out there that you can use. So that's the whole point. They're open resources that you can use. Uh, for NSCC 1010, it seemed just like a no-brainer to write an OER for that class because we don't want to use someone else's because we want it to be very specific to Nashville State. We want it to talk about what Nashville State students need to know in our NSCC 1010 class. And by the way, that's our first year experience course. And it's also a course that's short. It only meets for five weeks. So we ran into this issue where students would order the book or try to get the book and the class is over. Like by the time they got the book, the class was done. Um, it's also taught by many new faculty every term. So there's just not a lot of time for new faculty to 
get up to speed on what the book is. So we just, it just made a lot of sense for NSCC 1010 to have an OER, just a book that students can link to, it's free, we can update it all the time. Uh, so it was like a no brainer to write the grant and, and to give us the grant, uh, but then we had to actually do it. <laughs> so that, that was a challenge. Um, and I really appreciate Marla, Emily, and Eric sticking sticking with it. Um, the the great thing about OERs, as I've said, is you we own it now. Like we can do with it whatever we want. We can um, not just update it, but make it better, revise it, um, remix it. Um, we can share it beyond an SCC 1010. Um, not all of our students take that class, but might benefit from having access to the book. Uh, then the webpage just mentions the grant again. Uh, it mentions that OERs are something Achieving the Dream promotes as well. So this is something that is in connects us to achieving the dream and our strategic plan and being a student ready college. Uh, it's also very important that your OER is accessible. So, uh, so anyway, that, there's, I think the one, the, the downside for an OER is like, if you wanna have to write it, <laughs> but the great thing about TBR is that it's being very supportive of OERs. So we, we have a grant that is uh, giving us some stipend money for writing and also paying for professional development. So we're, we're, we're and we're part of the team. And so we're, we have more support than if we were just trying to do this on our own. Any questions just about TBR and the OER, what I've said so far? Okay, actually, what I'm gonna do in the chat real quick is um, I'm gonna upload a one page document that's a TBR's one pager about OERs. Uh, so you can have that to refer to. Okay, the next um, website I wanna show you, I am gonna show you our OER, but I also wanna show you that in addition to TBR promoting OERs, uh, the Tennessee Higher Education Commission, I think that's the THEC, yeah. Tennessee Higher Education Commission is also promoting OERs and they have um, a website and I'll put this link in the chat. And their website includes the TN Open Education Hub. And I'll put this link in the website and this is where you can search for OERs and our OER will be here eventually. Uh, that's the goal so that we are contributing to this um, hub for um, OER, OERs and OER information. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is show you ours. And again, uh, but Keep in mind, this is our very first, this is our first edition. Um, and I will put the link to it in the chat. But if you um, see things, typos, or um, you have suggestions, oops, did I just lose it? Uh, let us know, let me know. Maybe not right now, but um, uh, send me an email if, you, if you're looking through this and you see anything, because we can fix it. 
So um, we called our textbook, You've Got This, and it has five main chapters. And we tried to give it a sense of that this, this, it's not as if reading this book is going to make you the perfect student and you'll never have any trouble, but more that this is a book that can help you consider why you're here and what, it, what it's gonna take as you move through college, but it, you will grow and you will have to try to persist and find value. So we titled the chapters, um, basically verbs related to that. So chapter one is impress and it's about things you need to do in the first week of class. Uh, chapter two is value. It's more about career planning and considering why you are at Nashville State. What do you wanna do with the degree you're, you would achieve by being at Nashville State and um, how do you figure that out? And then chapter three, persist, is um, about making a plan, primarily an academic plan, but there's information about time management too and um, grit and just hanging in there. And then chapter four is grow. It is about study skills and how you can grow as a student, but also have a growth mindset. And chapter five, belong, is about the importance of finding your place in college and building relationships and making connections. And what we've done is also um, link the class very closely to this. So for this spring, our class, I'm just going to quickly go to the class. This is the NSCC 1010 shell. If I go to content, The modules, let's see, are have the same names as the chapters, and our and we have five chapters specifically because it's a five week class. So we have module one, impress, getting started. Module two, value, career plans. Module three, persist, academic plans. Module four, grow, study skills, and module five belong support and resources. And we have the, the book now is a, just a great match for what we're trying to do and the assignments that we have. So the assignments we, we have relate to these different chapters. So it's just, it's more integrated. And since we're not using someone else's book, it's, it's ours so we can make sure everything matches. But what I'd like to do now is just page through the book um, quickly so you can just kind of get a get a sense for what we tried to do here and um, and get some feedback. So our first chapter is um, well, this is just the intro page. There's a little index over here on the side and this was built through um, LibGuides. Uh, we'll show you why we like LibGuides. We just, we're very familiar with LibGuides, the, the, the library's LibGuides. We, we like them and we were able to make them interactive. So this worked, there are just so many different ways you can do an OER, but this just worked for us. This turn, like this is, this really worked for us. So what we've done is we start the book by talking about it's, we basically tried to tilt the book. So um, this intro page, we wanted to talk about the purpose of the book, the knowledge that students will gain from this book and the skills they'll gain from this book. So try to show them why we have this book for them. And we mentioned the um, table of contents and the authors. Then with each chapter, 
we start with a page that is um, like a, again, tilt it, but just tilt that particular chapter. What's the purpose of this particular chapter? What's the purpose of, um, what knowledge will you gain from this chapter? And what are the skills that you'll gain from this chapter? So every chapter is going to start like this. So if I go back, I go back to this page. So um, this is how chapter one starts. This is how chapter two starts. This is how chapter three starts and so on. So, so each chapter is gonna have the same basic tilted start to it. And then at the bottom of each chapter, that first page, then we have like eight to 10 pages that they go through. So I'm gonna click begin. So, and I, so I'm not gonna um, like read this to you, but just kind of show you the basic format and page through it. But as we move through the chapter, there's some, there's a, either an image or a video or something over here on the right. And then over on the left is um, some text that we've written and usually some kind of interactive question. So in like this cage, it is a little survey about their mindset. And so again, like there's an image and then there's some text and some questions. We wanted, wanted something that was a little interactive so that students would not just click through things, but answer questions. This page has, is instead of just an image, has a, a video. And then we can update this video. This is a syllabus tour. And then it has links to Nashville State things like our access center, our testing center, our student policy handbook. And we can talk about how, you know, this page is about textbooks. So we're, we're going to show them what it looks like to buy textbooks at Nashville State. So this is the first week chapter. So it's very syllabus oriented. We even mentioned FERPA, RAVE, different apps that we can use. It's going to make me answer this question. Great job. Um, and then we end each chapter with um, a checklist, like some things to do based on what you've learned on, in this chapter. and. Uh, a little like summary of what what have we talked about in this chapter and then what what can you expect in the next chapter so i did that chapter like did a lot of the text and then we we would work closely with emily in terms of like what kind of images we could put like this, the idea for this checklist was Emily's. Um, the idea for having like interactive questions was Emily's, and we're using a, a lib a lib a lib wizard instead of a lib guide for this. Um, so once they've finished the chapter, they can get a certificate of completion, and um, this term we're not going to be using those. I'm, Maybe if like for makeup work, but um, eventually it could be something like for points where they, they can submit their certificate of completion as indication that they've gone through the chapter. Okay, and then at the end of every chapter is a link to the next chapter. Before I do that, I um, let me show you also um, just a little bit about what we said we would do with our grant and um, just to give you a timeline for what what we're trying to accomplish here. And so to do that, let me go to new share. 
And you might need the Zoom feature that Deborah was talking about because this is pretty small. This is from the actual grant. And if you'd like to see the actual grant, just um, send me an email and I can send you a PDF. But we received the grant, I guess, in May. Um, and, and basically over the summer of 2021, we started meeting and just started trying to figure out like, what would the, like, what, did, what would this look like? Um, how many chapters should it have? What, what are we gonna use as the platform? And just, we just had some meetings to just sort of get going on this. And then, and then our, the idea was in the fall, we would meet like weekly and make progress on writing. And we, the summer was fine. We started meeting and we started going through things, but then the fall hit and it was just such, it was a really crazy start to the fall. So we really didn't do any work on the OER in the, like in August or September. And then it was like mid-October. <laughs> and I was like, you wrote, I wrote this grant, we have to do something. So um, that's when we, we started meeting again and trying to, get stuff written. Um, and honestly, it was it's really hard to get started. But once we did, once I had like stuff written, it, it gets easier. I um, you know, just have that writer's block at the beginning, but um, it does get easier once you start getting some writing done. And as Emily pointed out to us, we we could have images and we can link to videos. We didn't have to just have it just be our original writing. That there, there are so many resources out there we can that are open to us to link to. So as I show you the other chapters, we link to many videos. Um, we will do a little writing about the video, but it wasn't like, especially for this class, we, we didn't have to write that much. It wasn't um, a crazy amount of writing. We all, we did say though that we would show the OER this first draft. We have an advisory board. We wanted to show it to the Achieving the Dream team, the Teaching Center, the Access Center. We haven't done that, so we just ran out of time. Basically, this this was sort of finished yesterday, <laughs> so. Um, we um, need to do that. So this this was the original plan when I wrote this last April. Um, but basically, we have a first a first edition barely. We got it into the NSCC ten ten shells, and now um, we'll be able to show it to the classes and to um, these different groups to get feedback and write our second edition. I have a grant report that's due at the end of January. Uh, so I'll need to be working on that, but I feel good about it. We, we did get a first edition ready and we just have to um, now see, get feedback and revise it. So I am feeling good about that grant report. I have not written it. Uh, we are piloting the first edition in NSCC 1010 classes. And then Hope to have a second edition that's even better, ready. Um, revise it for the second seven week classes, but have a an even better version ready. Maybe I guess our third edition ready for the fall. I guess for this OER, it's never done. <laughs> we'll always be revising it. Okay, but let me um, go back to uh, the book. Now the second chapter is one called Value, and this is one that Eric worked on. And Eric is our go-to person for um, career, career connections, I'd say. So Eric was the perfect person to write this chapter and help students think about um, why they're here and how that connects to their goals beyond Nashville State. 
I'll just page through it, but Eric, if you want to say anything about any of these pages, jump in. We have a page on um, the value, like the literal value of a college degree. We have a page that connects to a video on what it, know your why, what you value. Uh, we connect to a video, a TED talk on the psychology of career decisions. We use a career, we use something called U Science in NSCC 1010. So we have a video that connects to a video about, we have a video about U Science and talk a bit about why we're using U Science. Um, a video and writing about aptitudes. About your interests. Your career personality. The resources um, at ONET and uh, the interest profiler in particular. Job statistics, things you can learn about jobs, what you need from a job. And then the last page is a checklist again, and uh, just a summary of the chapter and what the next chapter will bring. Jessica, this isn't specific to necessarily this chapter, but one of the things that I really appreciated about being able to create this OER is that um, with the textbook that we were using before, we kind of just had to uh, to pull the pieces out of that textbook that fit with what we really wanted to teach students in NSCC 1010. And with the OER, each chapter is kind of linked to the assignments that the students are going to be completing in each um, each week. So early on, they create um, they do a values reflection. So we ask them to think about their values, which is why we talked about that in this chapter. Um, they're going to be do doing new science um, early on too, so they start doing some of that career planning. And so throughout the chapters, um, we've been able to to set up the textbook. Uh, to mirror the, the schedule or the timeline of the class better than what the, the text we were using before could do. Great. All right, you just got a certificate of completion for value. Next chapter is persist. I worked on this chapter um, this is a chapter where I focus on academic planning, but it seemed like a good place to just talk about persisting and uh, like just the determination grit you need to stick with that plan. So, it, so the chapter begins more with discussion of perseverance and um, this link to the Angela Duckworth TED Talk on grit. A, a TED talk about procrastination, which really ends up being a TED talk about setting goals. A link to um, a video about making a to-do list and prioritizing. Um, a, a discussion, a little bit of information about how to plan out your week and some apps that can be of use for that. And then I start going into academic planning. So talking about the different types of degrees we have um, that you will learn skills beyond the like the typical like job skills, but also these soft skills, transferable skills. Um, 
a talk about um, the help you can get from advisors. So as you make a plan and as you're trying to persist and at Nashville State, um, reaching out to an advisor. And then acknowledging that you could change your mind, but now you have some tools to, to, to change your mind. And then again, just like the final page in a checklist. And th this connect, like Eric was saying, this, this chapter connects, we have um, a soft skills discussion in the class. We have a um, academic plan assignment in the class. When students, generally if I ask students, what, what's the one thing you wish you could be better at? They'll say time management. So we address time management in this chapter too. All right, and then the next chapter is grow. And this is the one about having a growth mindset and study skills. And this was a chapter that Marla worked on. So Marla, I will page through it, but you jump in if you wanna say anything. We start with just a slide about high school versus college. and then growth mindset and, and, and some links to help you might need along the way, like from the library and tutors and, and also just how important it is to, to try and uh, not cheat. And so a little discussion on, on, on it, academic honesty and plagiarism. Um, some a link to a video about critical thinking, uh, active learning, optimizing your learning for deep learning, tips on preparing for class, note taking, Um, how to have a conversation, TED Talk, to help with discussions in class and online. Um, talking about how to build class relationships. And we mentioned the, um, you know, beyond just building relationships with students in your class, um, consider the honors college, study abroad, a study group. Uh, looks like we might need to fix that. <laughs> and uh, and then the checklist. And then and this also connects to assignments. So we have we have discussions. We have um, a, a paper. They write in a little paragraph about growth. Um, textbook notes. We have a textbook. Two textbook notes assignments. They That's also have the email to the advisors, so oh, right. encouraging that connection. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to the last chapter. And that's called Belong. I worked on this chapter and the idea is just to help make sure students understand the resources available to them at Nashville State. And it's one of the great reasons why we have an OER now. So it's very Nashville State specific. Um, so this first uh, page is about how um, important a feeling of belonging can be. And um, just talk a little bit about um, what has helped Nashville State students feel like they belong. And one of the best ways is to build relationships. So this is a page about 
ways to do that, like with student organizations at Nashville State, um, Southern Word, uh, just to, and but also just to let them know that they're going to have to actively try because, you know, we don't have dormitories and we don't have like sports teams and there's just, it's something that they will, it's so important to have a positive experience in National State to engage and build relationships, but they, they will have to do some footwork to, to, to do that. Talk about equity in this chapter, um, because this chapter is in large part focused on resources. So what, what does equity mean? And what does equity mean in their at college? And what what do they feel like they need as a student to be successful? And some examples of what other students have thought. And then um, recognizing that success in college requires money, um, that, but there are there are supports you need beyond financial aid. So this is the beyond financial aid page. So talking about financial aid and payment, but also um, the student resource managers that we have and, and all those beyond financial aid supports that we have like the campus cupboard and um, transportation assistance and so on. And, and resources, not just at our college, but within our communities. And then um, a page about compassion and self-compassion and, and like mental health and taking care of yourself. And um, the role that stress can play um, when you're a student and how it can make it harder to um, uh, remember things. So just acknowledging that we get stressed, but how, how are ways to reduce that stress? So I'll link to a TED talk about that. Oh, I have to choose an answer. And uh, then some information about health and wellness, just like more physical health. And uh, motivation. And then that's it. That is the last um, chapter. But that we do have um, frequently asked questions. The, the idea that this book couldn't possibly answer everything. So on this page, we just list uh, some free, the top three frequently asked questions, and then places they can go to get other to get answers to questions. Like we have a in a CC 1010 webpage, lib the library, tutoring, and there are ways to get questions answered by a bot on the college webpage. So we indicate where these, how to get to these different bots. And that is our uh, book. And let me ask if, um, or how about I open it up to questions if you have questions of us, because I've been doing all the talking, um, questions about this particular OER or how like it works, like the tech, the tech, like an Emily question or um, content question or just an OER question, if you're thinking about writing one. I'll stop share. Go ahead, Deborah. If I just wanted to say this is brilliant. I really, really love what you guys have done. Oh, That's thank it. You. That's all I wanted to say is I'm looking at this gun and I found it, Marla. I did find it eventually. Uh, because I want to read through it. And I really like this. It's a fabulous job. Thanks. 
Yeah, please read through it. Um, especially given your American experience class, just like. And our new book is coming out too. I'm getting my copy, my printed copy this week. So, so I'm like, congratulations to you guys for finishing this because we just finished our third edition <laughs> and I know how hard it is to do it. Yeah. Could I ask a question? Sure. Thank you. Uh, so there was one, and I forgot who did it. So there's the English faculty member who did one last semester. That's Robert. Robert, okay. And has he used it in class yet? Do you know? Yes. Yes, they used it this past fall. Okay, so here's my question. I'm sorry, I had introductory questions, pre-questions to my big question. How, does he have any information on student response? to that to having the oer in their class in their class oh um i expect so because that's part of the grant proposal okay. like you have to get feedback okay and so that's what we'll be doing with our um students and faculty this spring and other groups that we need to send this to This is not a question, but just a comment that this looks so good. I was so impressed with this. Oh, thank you. Yes, great job. Somehow it came together. <laughs> it really did. I, I like to, hi, this is Jasmine. Um, I like to add to, um, with my uh, previous colleague. Um, this is very difficult because uh, I'm getting old and teaching new generation. But when I saw this, I felt like that um, you all are <laughs> the same student as, uh, I mean, the same generation as, uh, as our students are. So I think it's gonna serve our students very, very well. And I, I, it is a success, obviously, for you but I would like to take some credit because you're my colleague. So thank you so much. Thanks, Jasmine. <laughs> now, this course just makes so much sense to write an OER. I have, now when I think about like, could I do this for a biology class? I don't know yet. I, I would love to, but um, that's a whole other, thing. Go ahead, Deborah. Well, I was sitting here thinking and I made a comment. I may want to develop some ESL materials, OER, but not necessarily textbooks. Oh, supplemental materials, you know, because especially for our adjuncts to use, right? You know, right. what supplemental materials could we could we create uh, handouts and extra practices and that kind of stuff to be a resource for our students and for our adjuncts again, so that they don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. A hundred percent. And actually that T that Tennessee open hub link, um, that is not just textbooks. It can be like you say, other materials. Um, I was thinking maybe like a lab manual or um, like, it doesn't just have to be a traditional book or online book. I think the grant is for books, but that doesn't mean you have to. That's the only thing you can do. Start smaller. Uh, I have a question uh, for the people in, the, in our library. I know OER or Tennessee OER is a big thing, but before we do something really big, is there any way we can create a hub for our school instructors that whatever we produce, we can put there and our future instructor or student can use it um, as a supplement resources? Yes, we could do that. We could do that through a LibGuide, I think, Emily, couldn't we? So it, 
Yeah, we could. That Tennessee Open Education Hub is working on that amongst Tennessee colleges, um, but we could we could do something specific to Nashville State. But I'm hoping that Nashville State instructors that have created things will just add them to the Open Education Hub. Yeah, and I just posted the link to that. Um, the whole the whole um, uh, ethos of this is for people to share. So. Um, we could easily make an NSCC one on the OER hub, um, but it's these aren't supposed to be sort of like uh, if, if I'm misunderstanding, but these aren't supposed to be, you know, squirreled away, right? They're you get to decide what level of remixability and adaption and use that you want or feel comfortable with, but. See, that's actually really, really brilliant. I'm just sitting here. The more I think about it, the more brilliant I think it is, you know, especially for all areas, but particularly for mine, for ESL, because so many of our sister colleges in rural areas may have five students. You know, we have 500, 600. They may have five, right? So they're not, they don't have the manpower and the expertise to develop the materials but with something like that, those of us who do can put it out there. You know, we, we can go, oh, okay, yeah, I, I've got a lot to think about now. The writer in me is just going, ooh. Sally? Okay, yeah, I have a question. Maybe stupid, but I'm a librarian and <laughs> I'm big into this OER database merlot.org which is basically a great place to search for everything uh such as merlot such as other oers open libraries and it searches the web um do you guys use that because there's templates in there to create oer books if you are you aware of that are you, all you guys i'm asking all you guys um that's just you jessica <laughs> i just was wondering because TBR used to be a partner member. They are still a supporter of Merlot. Um, and this is a TBR grant. A lot of other community colleges are a partner member. We are not. I wish National State was, but um, I was just wondering why are we not utilizing, like you said, biology? There's a lot of open educational text, OER textbooks for biology, chemistry, you name it. Um, you can search in there and you could just use that rather than you having to do your own thing your biologist i'm looking at you jessica i mean or if you're whatever you teach why do you not like or i'm not saying you jessica but why does national state not utilize merlot more to find oer stuff because like the oer comments is, for... is merlot um which is a link so i I think oh. often, Sally, as we look at that, it becomes an issue of time and juggling all of the responsibilities. And as Jessica pointed out and her team pointed out, it took a lot of time to build one for Nashville State, but it also takes time to do the research and to gather. I do want to point out that we dropped the workshop reflection survey, if you will make sure to take that. And then I see that Jasmine and Deborah both have their hands up. So we'll go to Jasmine next. Um, I, th thanks, Amy. I, I'm gonna respond to Sally's um, concern. I, during the pandemic, I started looking into Marlowe and Libra Tax. These are not as organized as the way we like to teach our students, as I use, there are, and in chemistry, we need a lot of supplementary resource like homework, interactive homework. These are not that organized that way. But there are a lot of resources I still can use and I'm started using it. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, it takes a village to, to build something. And as I'm working by myself, um, I, I was looking for organic chemistry. Um, I am putting baby steps. and. And I'm glad that I'm doing it because that is very helpful 
um, for our students to read online anywhere they are, they are any device they are accessing. So in, in that sense, um, it is helpful. And yes, we are using, I'm using it, but very slowly I'm integrating to my course shells or course content. Yes, using it. Thank you. Deborah. And I was going to address Sally as well. I piloted the third edition of my book for American College Experience digitally last semester. I just uploaded the chapters as they came in. My students hated it. They wanted the paper copies. They wanted to have the book in their hands. They wanted to be able to interact with it. They wanted to be able to highlight it. So I think some of it too. And some of our students don't have good internet access. You know, we we're in those of us in Davidson County or near Davidson County kind of take it for granted, but especially, you know, in our, you know, Humphreys County, even places out in Dixon, even up here in White House, you know, I have a backup, you know, I'm in a White House and I've usually got pretty good internet, but I have a hotspot because we had ice, boom, everything went down. Power was out, internet was out, and it took forever for it to come back on last week during the snowstorm. And I was only able to work because I pay an extra $55 a month for a hotspot and our students can't afford that. So that's, that's also a challenge is just the access to the internet, consistent, reliable access for our students. Thank you. I do think that um, as we talk more and more about OERs and more of us are getting these grants and, and using them, it, it, it'll become more of the conversation that like when, when the biology group meets and we're con considering a textbook, now we'll consider OERs too. Just, it's just in the past, we just assumed we would use the, a publisher. And we've, we've come to depend on like all the publisher materials, um, including the homework that can be interactive. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a lot to think about, like how to shift to an OER for um, one of these, um, especially these classes that have a lot of homework, like the um, science and math classes. Um, we've enjoyed the interactive homework with these online publishers that give feedback right away. So, but there, but there are other, but there are options, like it might be like you could have an OER for the text, but maybe a cheaper option just for homework. Um, just so more of a menu of things we could get. There are, and I know, Amy, that I know you guys are trying to finish this up, but I did, I, if you notice that Emily threw out a link there to OER repositories a little earlier because there are quite a few of them out there and they are growing and it's a good thing to to be able to look at them and see what's out there and see what works for you what doesn't work and then if you find some that are really really good in your own research send them to Emily and we'll add them to this so we can have a growing what, what we want to do is make sure that the things we have are helpful for faculty. We don't want to just say, oh, here's a list of 500 OERs that we found on Google, so we're going to list them here. We want to make sure that people have used them and that they, you know, they, they do the job. I want to circle back to say thank you. I know looking at just the OER that we looked at today that our students are going to be so well served by it so to the team of printers today thank you thank you for the hours the sweat possible tears that went into putting this together as the stress that went but we applaud you literally and figuratively in emoji if that is a word and are grateful for the work that you're doing. Thank you for attending. We have more shops coming up in just a few moments. And so we hope to see you at 1.30 when we talk about making an academic plan in a new degree works. See you then, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.